I'm, I'm Linda Grader, I'm also a groomsman. And uh, I'm Alejandro de la Fuente, so a groomsman. So, so you guys might notice that uh, we're just all groomsmen. Uh, Casey talked a little bit about his formula before, and his formula is pretty complex. And to make things more complex, he didn't necessarily designate a best man. Uh, so we kind of talked it over, what's the diplomatic way to handle this? And we talked it over, and I think, I think we came up with something that you're going to like. So we're just going to all say a few words, and um, hopefully, hopefully that'll go pretty well. So we'll, we'll maybe just tell you about kind of how we met, uh, excuse me, how we, how we met Casey. Okay. Okay. Well, I think Casey, here, so Casey and I met back when we were in college. <laughs> ultimately, he's just a really good guy. I don't know, guys. Uh, I don't think this is going to work real well. So, I had a quarter in my pocket. So, uh, between Alejandro and Lyndon, um, Lyndon will be heads, Alejandro tails. So, I want you guys to call it out there. What we got? Heads! Heads! I see your uh, predominant heads. Heads it is. So, I think you were. Yeah. So here's Lyndon. Well, again, I'm, I'm uh, Lyndon Rader. Was uh, roommates with Casey for a number of years, and really honored to be up here. And, and uh, because there's three of us, I'm going to be pretty brief. Uh, as we sat up here, and, and so excited for Casey and, and Megan, uh, Scott, who's a recent dad, and I've got my my beautiful pregnant wife out there. We got talking about how important the women in our lives are. And uh, we both agreed that our wives would be just fine without us, um, but we would not make it without them. <laughs> we have some women up front here who know what I'm talking about. We, we met Megan. Uh, we've got a great group of friends here in the Twin Cities, and, and we all go way back. I think I've known Casey about 10 years now. So I think he was like he was like 35 when we met. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Megan was eight. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it really didn't take long. Uh, our, our group of friends met Megan. And I think it was maybe the second or third time that uh, she had come over for, for dinner and we had met and uh, her and my wife were off talking in the other room and, and uh, you know, Casey's not uh, not particularly serious a lot of the time. He's, he's pretty, he's kind of a joker, especially once you get to know him. And, but I, I thought, okay, I'm going to have a heart to heart with Casey here. And, and uh, now he's like 20 years my elder, so I, uh, I thought I'm going to tread into some waters here, try and give him some advice. You know, I've married guy for a couple years here. And, and I just told him, I said, you know, uh, Casey, I've known you about 10 years. I've seen the evolution of, of your girlfriends here, and there is no way you are going to top me. This is absolutely the most perfect fit for you, and you better not screw this up. You better marry this girl. And, and then find Casey for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> but like I said, Casey does have a, a fairly complex formula, and because uh, he's a pretty complex guy, and uh, we, we just uh, knew right away that Megan was was the solution to that equation. So we're so happy for you too. Congratulations. Now, I'm going to So, um, Lyndon and Casey and I were roommates for a couple of years. Um, I've been gone for a while, so I haven't gotten to know Megan terribly well, but I, I had a couple opportunities this summer to call. So I'll tell you, so I'll tell you a little bit about how I met Casey. Um, actually, the first time I met Casey was through Lyndon. He was living in Moorhead for a summer. And uh, me, I was a freshman year in college, and me and a friend Nick Wagner drove out to Moorhead uh, to go see uh, Lyndon. And really the only thing I remember about Casey is that we played Trivial Pursuit one night, and Casey was unstoppable. <laughs> this guy's really smart, and it's just, there's no penny. You can answer everything. Oh, yeah. and that's about all I remember about Casey. <laughs> this guy's really smart. Um, I met him two years later. Uh, we were going to move into our house at 100 Bedford Street in Minneapolis, which we've all lived in together at some point or another. And um, walked into the house, uh, that fine day in the summer, and uh, Casey's sitting on a recliner, eating mac and cheese 
out of the pot, which he took to the So, what? He didn't even have any bowls. So I had to stop there and say, uh, Casey's really smart, and uh, she really likes mac and cheese. Um, but there's actually another thing that's really interesting about Casey. Uh, he studied music, and I really do believe he's an incredibly brilliant person, actually. And I really respect that. And he studied music, and he really wanted to do music, and wanted to be involved with music. And uh, I, when I lived with him, he was actually a waiter at Cattle Company, and then uh, moved up in the ranks at Cattle Company, moved over to the Green Mill to wait uh, pizzas. Now, that wasn't Casey's aspiration. Casey really wanted to do music. And what I really, really respect about Casey is that he's the type of guy that's not driven by greed or personal promotion or money. He's driven about what he really wants. And he really wanted to do music. And I can't, I can't explain how respectful I am of him, of his choice, and, and the sacrifices he made to do what he did. So uh, this is kind of, he's always been kind of a, an example for me in my life about doing what you really want to do. And um, I think it was a year ago in the spring, I talked to Linda, and I hadn't talked to him for a long time. And he kind of told me what he told you guys. He's like, yeah, Casey's dating this girl, and she's really special. And uh, I got the opportunity to meet them this summer, and I have to say that I really feel the same way. And uh, I'm really, really happy for both of you. Uh, from what I've met Megan, she's an incredibly unique person, incredibly intelligent as well, and she's funny, and we're a great match. And so I'm, I'm really happy for both of you, and uh, I wish you both the very best. Uh, I'm Scott again. I'm going to flip the coin, so I guess I get to go laugh. Um, I knew I wasn't going to be as quick on my feet as Alejandro and Linden, so I decided to write something down so that I could recite to uh, Casey and Megan. Um, <clears throat> you know, going through this, uh, I wanted to say something that you guys would remember forever. Um, so I scoured the internet to find um, something very clever. Um, with a new baby that has been taking up quite a bit of my time, I settled for a speech that is also a rhyme. Um, it's about how Casey and Megan came together, and why I am quite certain that they will be together forever. So Casey and Megan, the day is finally here. You're meant for each other, and that is quite clear. You see, Casey is a guy who likes odd types, odd types of things, like he enjoys tutoring math and uh, violin strings. Um, Casey enjoys quiet, um, especially on the phone. <laughs> when he calls and you answer, it's like talking alone. <laughs> so when I thought about Casey finding a mate, I cringed about thinking about that awkward first date. <laughs> but to hear Megan's story, much to my surprise, she went home from their first date with the dreamy look in her eyes. Apparently Casey was talkative. Charming and witty. All of those things left Megan quite giddy. <laughs> After that first date, things didn't mellow. Maybe it's because Casey learned Megan plays the cello. <laughs> she also likes books, computers, and math. It's no wonder they moved so quickly together down this path. When I met her on New Year's 2008, I quickly discovered that Megan was quite great. Those quirks of Casey's we've come to embrace. Megan has many of the same, but a much prettier face. <laughs> That's the end of my rhyme. There really is no more. So now everybody drink up and toast Casey and Megan, and let's hit the dance floor. <laughs> Cheers to Casey and Megan from the Groomsmen.